Okay, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Our 14th installment of Defending Our Faith Theology Basics. So today we're going to speak about the characteristics of God. We're using a slightly different setup. Uh, so excuse me if you see my eyes looking down. I'm using a different camera, which is above uh, the laptop camera. So I'm just getting used to it. So I'm just going to pray uh, that God helps us today. Uh, Father God, I just pray that you can speak to us today, uh, speak through me, God, speak through us. I pray, Father God, that you can illuminate your your words, the truth about you. And I pray, God, that you can bring us to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, so just a quick recap of what we learned uh, two weeks ago. So... Uh, for those of us that were there, uh, we discussed um, world religions. So we looked at different world religions from Islam to Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Judaism, and of course, uh, Christianity as well. And we learned that all world religions, um, they believe that reaching paradise and salvation is done through the works that their followers do. However, Christianity is different because it relies on the external person of Jesus Christ. We also learned that Christianity has historical evidence in the person, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we learned that the sacred texts of the Bible have historical uh, prophecies which have proven to be true uh, based on history. And we learned that the major distinction is that Christianity solely relies on the person of Jesus Christ um, to justify us um, with God. Amen to that. So today we're going to speak about the characteristics of God. And we're going to speak about the incommunicable versus communicable characteristics of God. We're going to speak about God's immutability. And we're going to speak about applying God's character. Applying God's character. Um, hey, Ifia. Thanks for joining us. Hey. So, <laughs> hey, hey. So let's begin. Okay, God's characteristics. There's so many um, to talk about, uh, to write about. We can't capture them all um, in a 30-minute discussion on a slide and uh, there's so many but here are just a few so i'm sure you may have heard of some of these words before maybe some of them you haven't uh, we'll talk about a few of them in more detail as well so god is good he is omnipresent he is wise he is gracious um he is rough he is just he is eternal he is merciful immortal love he is perfect holy sovereign omniscient jealous omnipotent truthful unity unchangeableness independent so many so many characteristics of god um have you guys heard of any of these uh, characteristics yeah i actually learned that from catholic school <laughs> oh cool which yeah. ones um omnipresent is when he's everywhere nice. omnipotent is all powerful yes and omniscient is all-knowing. Love that, love that. That's right, perfect. Yeah. yeah they taught you well, fair enough. <laughs> um, I'm going to go through some of these in more detail as well. Um, so yeah, as Afia said, spot on. Um, those are three definitions of those three things. We're going to speak about them as well. Um, just as God is like fair and righteous in how he decides things, um, wise, he he knows things. He he knows what is best. Um, good. Um, he's kind in every single way. Uh, perfect. Um, is an important one. So keep an eye on that. I'm gonna come uh, back to that. That's like he's fully fulfilled. He has no potential, which is a, a strong statement. But we're gonna come onto that as well. All right. So let's look at some of these characteristics in scripture. <clears throat> so as Effie has said. Um, the three O's, these are very popular ones, so we'll start with these. 
So omnipotent, what does that mean? It means that God is unlimitedly powerful. Think about it. He has so much power that he created the universe through his words. Let's look at the scripture, um, uh, Colossians uh, chapter 1, verse 16. And Paul writes, For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. So that's just uh, Paul sharing that nothing in this world, whether the things we see or can't see, um, in space um, or on the, the ground of this earth, nothing has not come through God, has not come through uh, Jesus. So everything was created through him. That means that God is uncreated, as we spoke about um, in some previous sessions. So God is powerful. He's very powerful. Omnipresent. Um, this basically means that God is everywhere at once. That's kind of one understanding of it. But the proper understanding is that God exists outside of time, space, and matter. So therefore, he can encompass all of creation. Because, of course, God isn't where there is, uh, let's say, sin and evil. God isn't there. But he still encompasses all of creation. He's outside of creation. I hope that makes sense. And he can be spoken to anywhere from the world, right? We don't need to be in one geographic place to be able to speak to God. Um, in Psalms 139, uh, verse 7, David asked the rhetorical question, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? And the answer is obviously nowhere because God is um omnipresent and finally omniscient uh, god knows everything uh, this is unlimited knowledge you see the word science in there that's uh, knowledge so god knows everything and john wrote in first john three twenty, literally god knows all things and david wrote as well in psalms 147 verse 5 his understanding is infinite his understanding is infinite. Our understanding is finite, but God's understanding is infinite. I hope that helps. So now I just want to talk about um, God's incommunicable and communicable characteristics. Incommunicable and communicable characteristics. So I'm just getting my watch just to keep an eye on the time. Okay, cool. So bear with me i know these words are probably uh maybe different or foreign to some of you but let's try to break them down so incommunicable these are characteristics which god does not share with human beings i'll give you an example um his independence god is independent because he doesn't need anything or anyone however human beings are not independent we need god god doesn't need us I hope you can see that distinction. Um, another example is his omnipresence. God can, as I said, be everywhere at the same time. He encompasses creation. He is outside of space, time, and matter. However, we are inside space, time, and matter. I can't be in New York whilst I'm in London. Although I would like to be, or maybe somewhere a bit more hotter like LA, I'd like to be right now, but I can't be. Um, eternity. God um, existed before time. I didn't. I existed within the realms of time, but God exists outside of the realms of time. And unchangeableness, which is a really important one. God cannot change, however we can. Communicable are characteristics which God does share with human beings to some varying degrees. So God is just. Obviously, he's perfect, remember? So he's perfectly just. Um, but yeah, humans can strive for justice as well. Um, humans can have a heart for justice as God has kind of stamped um, his, his morals, his conscience on people's hearts. Um, 
God is good, perfectly good. Humans can be good as well, uh, to varying degrees. God is merciful, gracious, love, um, and jealous as well. I hope you guys understand um, where I'm going with this. Um, but we need to remember that God is perfect as well. So those things are um, perfected. So that's a graph just kind of outlining what that would look like. So the communicable attributes would be in the blue section, the Venn, of the Venn diagram. The incommunicable on the left and and the man, flesh, I guess, the carnal side of uh, human beings is on the right. I hope that makes sense. We're going to have questions at the end, so should be finishing up in about uh, five minutes. So I want you guys to understand these three truths about God's characteristics, these three truths. Uh, a, God's characteristics are not additions to his being. Let me try and say that in a different way. So God's characteristics, they're not separate to who he is. Just keep that in mind. Uh, B, God's being is not a collection of uh, characteristics or attributes. So God's being isn't just made up of different characteristics or attributes. And the final truth is God equals his characteristics. God is the exact same thing as his characteristics, all of them at the same time, at the full potential of each of each and every one of them. I hope that makes sense. And I think this will kind of explain that in a bit more detail. So this is the doctrine of God's immutability. So this doctrine, it means that God is unchanging. Uh, we can read in Malachi uh, 3, 6. I, the Lord, do not change. God is unchanging. Let's think about this logically. Why is God unchanging? So we've got three uh, statements here. So change exists in the realm of time. For something to change, it has to have a beginning of when it changed and an end, the after point of when it changed. Since God exists outside of the realm of time, therefore God cannot change. Remember, we already spoke about God creating the universe, including time, space, and matter. So since he exists outside of time, he cannot change. Secondly, another logical reason, change leads to something being improved or made worse. If you remember, we already said that God is perfect. So therefore, he cannot be improved anymore. And since he's perfect, he can't be made worse. If you think about it, if God was to be able to be made better, that would mean that he has potential, but he doesn't. All of his potential is fully realized. That's why I said earlier, God has no potential. But you and I, we have potential because we are imperfect. And thirdly, remember, God is a person as well. So people change their minds when different information is presented. For example, uh, someone may not decide to eat McDonald's after they realize what actually goes in those chicken nuggets. But since God knows everything, remember he's omniscient and he's wise as well. Therefore, he already has all of the information laid out to him. Therefore, he cannot change his mind. You may be familiar with some scriptures where um, the Bible communicates God changing his mind. But really, that's, um, I guess, symbolism for what's actually happening. It's the, the circumstances which are changing. God himself already knew what he would do in that moment of time. So I think this is a really pl important place to uh, nearly conclude. So I just want us to apply these characteristics in our life. And when I was writing this, it helped me to just realize the God that I serve. So because God is loving, you guys can repeat like with your mics off, uh, feel free to. Because God is loving, I know that he will always want 
what is best for my life, even if it doesn't feel what is best. Because God is all knowing and all wise, I know he knows what is best for my life. So it makes sense to find out his will through prayer and study. Because God is truthful, I know his word is trustworthy and useful for my life and others. Because God is immortal, I have hope that I will become immortal through my faith and my trust in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And most importantly, arguably most importantly, because God is unchanging, I know his promises can be fully relied on. So I just want us to conclude here. Um, God equals his characteristics. No characteristic is more important than the other. God equals his characteristics and his characteristics equal him. Humans share some of God's characteristics to varying degrees. Um, for example, no human is eternal. Humans can have knowledge, um, some knowledge. Humans can love, but not perfectly. And God has no potential, which has not been fully realized. God has no potential. His characteristics are fully perfected. Okay, so thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have some time for questions uh, for those who uh, would like to ask. So feel free to unmute if you have any questions. We've got about uh, 10 minutes uh, or so. No pressure. Is it possible to go back to some of the previous slides, please? Yeah, um, definitely. Which one? Uh, anyway, I stop? Yes, you thank you. This one? Perfect. Yeah, okay. Uh, I thought you were gonna. Are you gonna ask a question? I thought you. Sorry, I'm. I'm talking whilst um the mute is on. <laughs> oh, no um, I don't know if this is even. Do you know it's not exclusively related to this, but um, oh, actually it might be. So you know how like we are made up of soul spirit and flesh I think <laughs> um, I think yeah, the tri yeah, so, yeah. The do you think that that is do you think that that in any way um, is 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 similar to the makeup of God's character in any way Mm, that's that's an interesting. Um, well, yeah, if we yeah believe in that the trichotomy uh, perspective, which is where human beings are soul, spirit, flesh, the other perspective is the dichotomy, which means that uh, spirit and soul are used interchangeably in the Bible. So there's mm. spirit, soul, and flesh. But let's say we, yeah, we believe in the trichotomy. Um, I think it does kind of parallel God in a sense. Like God has three uh, persons of his being. Um, so yeah, there, there's some parallel there. In terms of his characteristics, I probably, I'm not too sure if I can think of a parallel because he has so many characteristics. Mm. Yes. So in uh, terms of, so I guess in, in, I don't think I've asked my question properly. So you know how like it, the diagram describes God as divine spirit. Mm. So, and, and we are, we have our spirit yeah. and our flesh. Yeah. So our spirit is what connects with God, right? Yeah. So where does the soul that come in? Sense. I think that's I what I'm think. trying to... Okay, I didn't, sure. Yeah, I didn't ask my question properly. That's okay. Well, we're definitely we're gonna do a soul 
um, kind of like the component of man uh, in the future. But from what I understand, and I will do some more research on this, there's two main views. Um, as I was saying, um, people who are trichotomists, they believe that man is made up of the flesh, the spirit and the soul. Um, so the soul would be, I guess, the will, um, the emotions, the intellect. The spirit would be what connects um, God to man and what becomes alive. And the flesh is, I guess, our, our sinful nature. Um, but the dichotomists um, just believe in uh, two components. So the flesh, and they believe that the soul and the spirit are used interchangeably. So I guess oh, that's interesting. the spirit would have the same functions. Okay, I didn't actually know that. That's really interesting. Okay. Yeah, I only learned that not too long ago as well. Um, right. Yes, it is interesting. And you know, do you know, like, in terms of the differences between who believes what, is it a, a denominational thing or, um, mm -hmm. yeah, like, who believes what? I'm not too sure, to be fair, exactly what groups. Um, I'd have to do some more research on that. And then, yeah, we'll definitely bring that to the table next time. Sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, I know our fellowship is more trichotomy. Um, the pot, yeah, like the Potter's House Fellowship. Um, and yeah, to be fair, I think it does make sense personally. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, no worries, Ophelia. Okay, Auntie Joanna asked, um, CJ, please explain the wrath of God in an example, meaning as I guess his anger or his ultimate price for his displeasure of man's actions against him in Jesus Christ. I can see him. Okay, yes. Okay. Okay, Auntie Leah. So let's go back to um, the characteristics. So yeah, Auntie, you can see the wrath of God is one characteristic of uh, many characteristics that God has. You know, I guess his anger or his ultimate price. So yeah, um, I guess anger is a, I guess an interchangeable word with wrath. Um, but the thing with um, the difference with us and God, I may show wrath to someone, but I am not perfect. I am not perfectly loving. I am not perfectly just or righteous. I am not perfectly truthful. So although God may show wrath, for example, let's take an example, an extreme example like Sodom and Gomorrah, when God destroyed the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. To the outside view, that may seem unfair and harsh, but the outside person, which would be a human being, isn't perfectly just. They are not perfectly truthful. They're not perfectly righteous. They're not perfect. Um, they're not omniscient. They don't know everything. They're not all wise. They're not good. So because God has all of these characteristics, we may see one event happen in time, such as um, Sodom and Gomorrah being destroyed. And we may think that, and we may paint God as just a, a kind of angry uh, God, an unfair God. But we have to remember that all of his characteristics are working at the same time. Um, and they all are working 100% of the time um, at their full capacity. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Okay, I'll take the silence as a yes. All right. Um, yeah, if we don't have any more questions, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up. Um, and yeah, we'll be back in two weeks, where we'll be speaking about the Trinity. We'll be speaking about um the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, okay, no worries, Auntie. Um. I'm going to pray now. Uh, Father God, I just thank you for this time. 
that you have given us, Lord. I pray that it can encourage us, God, and it can just deepen our understanding of you and our worship of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. amen. Thank you.